All right, but how do I get? Oh, 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 oh! Ha oh. <laughs> ha! Today's episode was made possible through the support of the Thought Emporium and dozens of other people just like you on Patreon. Check out the links below to learn all kinds of cool stuff about other things you can get from these videos. Hi there guys, welcome back to the shop. For today's equipment autopsy, we have the fabulous, the beautiful Lenovo Sierra 10-3 IdeaPad is weedly and nutless, but they're cool. It's, I really, I love the idea pad design. I like the idea of something this tiny that I can just toss in like my flight backpack and use it for setting up quads or, you know, tweaking settings on an airplane or something like that. I love the idea. I just haven't found one this tiny in this form factor that has any kind of stones at all. Like it, this is another one of those, like the last one we did, it's got a gig of RAM. It's got a decent hard drive. It's got 250 gigs of hard drive. And it's got this button right here, this QS and that. And if I remember right, this would boot at one point back before it was completely shredded and put Linux on it. So it would actually live for another few years. Um, it would boot into like a little Linux operating system that was really restricted. So this is gonna be another one of those one tool autopsies. If I can, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try. That's my challenge to myself is can I do this with only this one tool? So we're in and there's my Windows 7 license that I wanted to make sure to not share with anybody because people complain when I do it. Like, you can't show your Windows license, man. Somebody's gonna steal it. What do I care? I just put the computer into a dumpster. What? Do I, <laughs> I don't care. Because not only is it a Windows license, which I, Windows is cool, but I don't use it very much. I use Windows on like two computers. Everything else I do is Linux. Um, so like if somebody out there needs it so bad, then you know, you can have my windows. Now this is a way better battery than the last one, but you can tell by looking at it. And this is, this is the thing. Most laptop batteries are based around the ubiquitous 18650 cells. So are uh, tool batteries too. Like these are super common. Like the M12 tool batteries, what do you want to bet? There's an 18650 there, there, and there, okay? This is probably a 3S battery made with 18650s. I don't know, and at like 100 bucks a battery, I'm not gonna take one apart, but like you look at this, and you look at the shape. See how it's that long tube? So we look at this, and, and I see one, two, three, four, five, six. This is going to have six 18650 batteries in it. I'm not going to bother taking it apart. All right, so we're in. And right away, I like the construction on this as far as from a maintenance standpoint, way better than I liked the Asus. Now, I like Asus machines. Lenovo's tend to be better machines. And this one is especially better if you want to work on it because all I did was take out a couple screws and I instantly have access to the hard drive, which is oddly enough, another momentous Seagate, 250 gigabytes. That's the exact same thing we had in the other computer. And then over here, I got one gig of RAM, cheap one gigabyte. And I think this will take a max of two, which sucks. Somebody teach me. I got a question that I want to know the answer to. I see on a lot of computers, like if you get on something like this or the other one that we just did an autopsy of, and you go on like crucial.com, it'll say it's got one slot, takes a maximum of two gigabytes. Why? Why can I only have a maximum of two gigabytes? Why, if I can fit an eight gigabyte memory chip in that slot, why can't I put an eight gig in there? If I put an eight gig in, will it only recognize the first two gigabytes? Or will it work on eight, but I take a speed hit? Or like, what's a trade-off? Will it just not see it at all? How does this work? Now, this is kind of cool. The hard drive on this one actually feeds off to a cable. So I pull this out. Now, these are all, this is spinning rust hard drives, so you got to be careful with these. But it's 250. That's not bad. 
I can use that. And we got a little Wi-Fi module that we can instantly access. So I'm gonna unplug the antennas there. We'll take a look at the Wi-Fi module. That's the big sticker on it. Maybe that'll teach you something. Maybe it'll tell you something and you can teach me from it. So there's, that's our MAC address. And here's the actual data on the module. Now, I don't know if this is Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or anything. I don't see anything on it that really tells me if it's Yeah, nothing jumps up. It's definitely radio. It's got the FCC ID and all that jazz. And, you know, antenna connectors. I'm going to say that's a Wi-Fi and or Bluetooth unit. Now that came out of this slot right here. You can see the antenna leads. What goes in this slot? I got another little wire here. Could this be a Bluetooth module? Could it be memory, a solid state hard drive, something like that? What, what goes there? What do? Teach me. Because when you comment and teach me new stuff, you help all the other people that are watching this video, which is like, you know, there's like a dozen people that watch us. It helps them learn things too. And that's what, that's what we're here for. Because you get on YouTube and you never know who's watching, which is what gets really cool. Because it'll be like some dude who was an engineer somewhere along the line, because there's a lot of people that are involved in making one of these. And you'll end up meeting people that it'll be like some girl who was a design engineer somewhere or some guy who was on the factory floor or something. And everybody's got stories and everybody's got little secret things they know about stuff and they can share. And I just think that's cool. I like that together we can learn and explore and share all this really weird stuff. It's just, it's just cool. I know I'm a nerd and a romantic and those two things together, kind of rare. That's why I make a living on the television here. There's no hard drive in there anymore. Get the damn screw out. There. Hey, I got it. Okay. Hard drives are shock sensitive. Nothing else in here really is. So, how are we going to do this? We took out all the screws. There was a lot. But now, oh, 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 feels good, bro. Yep. Yep. Come on. Go on, girl. Go ahead. Get down. Come on. You're, com you're coming apart. Your ass is mine. Yeah. Oh, wait. Shit. I got, I got like three different levels happening here. <laughs> I got, oh, there we go. All right, we got it, we got it. Okay, so the keyboard's out. I love this keyboard. It's still just a chiclet keyboard, but it's good. All right, we got a couple screws here. Very similar form factor internally to the other machine. You gotta wonder how often they buy each other's products just to compare notes of like, oh, hey, they did it like this. Oh, we can do that better. Let's try this. That totally never happens. Oh, that got way easier, didn't it? Can we get into this one? We couldn't get into the other one. Can we get into this one? Let's find out. I'm going mining. All right, I got the outer cover off with the aluminum tape. Half the world is held together with aluminum tape. Okay, so that's gone. Oh, oh, look at that. That's cute. Little bubble chip. Isn't that neat? That's an integrated circuit without like a real case. It's just encapsulated in goop. It's like an epoxy type thing. They're kind of neat. All right, but how do I get, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> All right, now this is, this is probably not gonna come off of here without a fight. So we've got, 
we've got our metal touch pad here, and that's like a piece of aluminum, and then that's directly bonded to the bottom. And I wonder if I could use that for something. Because wouldn't it be cool to have that, like, on? Because it's just one little cable that goes to it. There's just this one little cable on the bottom, which I got to be able to get that somewhere. And I wonder, I got two buttons here, which this lands on. So when you press on this, that's the two buttons on the bottom. I'm keeping that. I don't really know why. I probably won't be able to actually do anything with it. I'll probably just keep it and have it sitting around in, in a little box of bullshit for like the next five years and be like, oh, I'm gonna use that for a thing. And I'm not actually ever gonna use that for a thing, but I'm gonna hold on to it because maybe, just maybe at some point in the future, I'll get lucky. And if you've got a way to interface that, comment and let me know because I think that could be cool to have that in like a wearable or something weird like that. What in the hell are you? I think that's a speaker. All right, we're gonna, let's do a round of screws. But I think I've got them all. That's just stuck. Uh, that's gonna be the screen plug, which is a different style plug than the other computer, but it is in the exact same spot. Some cap on tape. So we've got our entire logic board here, or motherboard, if you will. What's the difference between a motherboard and a logic board? So we've, we've got another one of those, like look at the similarities on this to the Asus. We're still held in with a couple little tabs and the two screws and that's it for the whole CPU fan. It's an integrated fan and dual heat sinks. And there's two chips located under it. Like this is freakishly similar. This right here with a little aluminum heat sink and the fan, I don't think this has heat pipe technology in it at all. I think that's just a block of aluminum. And it looks, it's, it's so dingy colored, it almost looks like magnesium. I don't know if they use magnesium for heat sinks. I know they use magnesium as frame materials in a lot of cameras and rather expensive computers and really expensive cameras. So is this magnesium or is that aluminum? You'd think, I don't, I don't know the thermal properties of magnesium. Um, I know that magnesium's thermal properties get pretty exciting if you light it though, and it'd be really easy to figure that out. But this, this is some casting. You can just tell it's like a, a sand cast type thing from the surface. This would be kind of cool because it's just a little three wire fan. You get away with two because one's just going to be a speed sensor. You can mount this like in a fan or something or in a, in a hat on the back of your neck. It's probably a pretty stupid idea, but it could be cool. So we've got memory card reader, power, all the usual things. Nothing particularly interesting on here. There is a little microscopic switch right here. I think that might be the hardware disable for the Wi-Fi or something. Oh, and there's a little tiny battery. Little lithium coin cell. That's the worst sound, isn't it? That's never the sound you want to hear. Oh, well, it's all like fake carbon fiber on the back. Crazy Joe to have a fit over that. I'll bet he's got opinions about fake carbon fiber. So let's take the screen off. I'm going to work my pointy tool in there and try diligently to not stab myself. Come on, you're coming out. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Look right here. Lurf, there's a lurf. Is there a screw? There's a screw. See, lurfs hide screws, man, all the time. You always check your lurfs. I didn't because I'm not like, it's not like I'm fixing a client's machine or something like that. So I don't really care if I just absolutely pooch this. But if we look right under that lurf, there's a screw. Little microscopic black metricated screw. Because 
I'm, I'm yanking the thing off and I feel more resistance than I should. And now, oh hey, that just comes right out of there. Yeah, we don't, we don't need any of that. So now we've got a screen. Am I going to be able to salvage a second screen? Am I going to be able to have two that I can use for like a little robot or do something fancy with, with a Raspberry Pi? Maybe. Let's see how it's wired. All these screws have that generic Chinese, not exactly blue Loctite on them. You know what they use in China instead of blue Loctite, right? Rocktite. <laughs> I'm a bad man. <laughs> hey, in some parts of the world, they just cross thread it. Cross threads as good as red Loctite. Okay, we got all those off, I think. Will it lift? Will it move? Does it lift and separate like a wonder bra? Oh, come on. Okay, let's take off the hinge screws, which are different. The hinge screws are shiny metal. They're also Still microscopically tiny, but they're shiny metal. And I'm going to work my way down on this side. Let's take that whole board out. And all the interlaced cables. I love how they have, I'll show you these, there's these little tabs in here that the cables run under and it, it's how they did all the cable routing. Holds everything in place, which is cool because these are actually coaxial cables. These are antenna cables for uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, whatever. So that means they're coaxial cables and thusly kind of delicate. So you probably shouldn't be reefing on them and yanking them around, Chris, huh? Yeah, probably not. All right, we'll pull that out. That's garbage. Now we've got, look at the engineering that went into that hinge. Wow, there is, how many steps in that die? Because these are stamped, these are die stamped. How many steps in that die process? Very high resistance in the hinge. It wants to hold its position. There's a lot going on in just that little hinge. Somebody paid a couple bucks for that. That's neat. All right, so now we've got, we got a lot happening here. And I have, here, I'll show you the screen. That's our model number on the screen. This is the back of it. Manufactured in 10 of 04, October 2004. And that's my plug. And I got wires going from both sides. It's an FL5 LCD cable. And I'm going to see if I can just unplug just this cable. It's taped in place. Wow, there is like zero retention wow that's that is pure gold behold the luxury the majesty of this fuck off tiny little plug made of pure luxurious gold yes that's right you know you want one do you need to impress the love of your life give her 
the finest of gold quality interconnects, maybe even the entire LCD right there. Nothing says I love you like a gold LCD interconnect. And if you can find me a cable that plugs into that other than this one, I'm interested because I'd like to get from there to a Raspberry Pi. That's, that's my goal. So this is just Ethernet. Look at this. It's the same thing as the other one. We've got Ethernet, dual USB, and then audio in and out. The, the Ethernet plug's different. The other one had the little rah, Muppet job, but those two machines are remarkably similar for being made by two very different companies. So that's our second equipment autopsy in the little series there of netbook computers. Thank you for hanging out. By all means, comment in, teach me stuff. I want to hear what you have to say because I absolutely learn just as much from you guys as I get to teach as we go along through this. And I really like that. I like that so many smart people watch my videos and have really cool things that they can input and bring to the table on this. I like that a lot. If you like hanging out and talking about nerdy stuff, check out my Discord. Links are in the description. And if you want to get yourself one of these or any of the other tools that I use in these videos, check out the other link below in the description to my Amazon store where you can get my little Klein 32614 screwdriver that I just took that whole thing apart with or half the things on the wall behind me. You guys have fun as always. I'm Chris Bowden and you're not. And I'll see you next time.